This is season two, episode two, brought to you by myself, Joseph Ward, Matias Sweet, and Miss Elena Staples, Dr. AKA Dr. Staples. We represent the Ryan White program for Neighborhood Medical Center. Yay! And remember, Mind Your Body and Soul is an educational podcast that focuses on all things health related. To help our listeners learn more about the various health topics and information they may not have access to. We seek to inform, empower, uplift, and mobilize our listeners to become the healthiest versions of themselves. And Mind Your Body and Soul is available every Wednesday at, NM- at www.nmcpodcast.com, as well as Anchor. Make sure y'all go check us out on Anchor, Breaker, Radio Republic, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Spotify. Google Podcast and subscribe to our Neighborhood Medical Center's YouTube channel. That way you can get all these beautiful podcasts that we have for you. And we're gonna continue to bring it because that is what we do. In this season too, man. We we survived a whole season. That's Y'all right. Give our Yay. 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 So, so season two, season two opens up at at an auspicious time. See I I dig into my bag of words at an auspicious time, right? That's because right. That's right. The month of March is women's what? Women's Health Month or Women's yeah. International? Mm-hmm. It's all about the women in March. Women and women. right, and so it just so happened that today, March tenth, is National Women and Girls HIV, HIV AIDS Awareness Day. So that's one of the main reasons. International. Right. International. International. Ooh. International awareness. International. What? Right. I want to give a shout out to all our fans in Ireland, all our fans in Sweden, <laughs> all our fans in Brazil. We love y'all too. Johannesburg. <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. We, we <laughs> so, I, our podcast today is going to focus. The bulk of it is going to be women in HIV, but we want to talk about other factors that may contribute to women's health as far as improving women's health or things that may compromise women. That's right. Because we, you know, working in this, uh, in the health realm and public health, we understand that a person may be compromised by HIV, but that may not be their biggest issue. Nope, right. nope, nope. But, but, but their, their, their biggest issue can impact their HIV. Because there are a lot of chronic conditions, medical conditions that that actually affect sometimes how a person they could be taking a medication that actually um, has a drug drug interaction with the HIV medication that they're having, therefore impacting the viral load or the T cell count. And so, so you know, this is this is a great podcast today. This is good. This is good stuff. So, okay, so I want to, and I know HIV is going to be the boat, but when I'm in this building, mm-hmm. we have a we have a number of brochures on the wall. Even when I'm in the, at the Brevard building, when in the clinic, you know, there's the STD chart on the wall, mm-hmm. and it says STDs affect women differently. Mm-hmm. Could, you, could you kind of explain that to me and to us uh, a bit more? Why? Because we, we understand all right, men's equipment is external, women's uh-huh. equipment is internal, but besides mm-hmm. the internal and external equipment, what mm-hmm. makes, why, why do STDs affect women differently? Well, there, there are several reasons uh, for that. That's a very good question. Because um, let's say one reason, signs and symptoms, you know, the symptoms that women have, you know, the the fact is, is that, you know, um, males may uh, take, for instance, trichomonas. Mm -hmm. Males may not even know that they are uh, infected with um, with the uh, the protozoan trichomoniasis. However, women, on the other hand, because of the way that it affects the internal chemistry, that women are given signs that Mm -hmm. something is just not right 
Take, for instance, men do not have any kind of penal discharge, clear or cloudy, women do. And so really it goes back to really the, the pH of the vagina, the um, how, um, how if there is something else that is, that's possibly in the reproductive organs, such as fibroids, all of that goes into um, a woman's uh, functioning, right. uh, genital uh, or reproductive functioning, which can affect how a STI presents itself. Mm -hmm. So, so it's not just so. Really, I guess you can look at it from more of a chemistry standpoint than anything else. Okay. okay. Internal okay. workings. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Enter. But and and see that's why I I kind of asked it the way I asked it because knowing what I already know, mm -hmm. like internal workings. But what about the STD? And see, and you answered it, but that's why that's that's just what, what in my mind. I I know my external hurts. It's it, internal. I get gonorrhea. She get gonorrhea. We know both of us can have this talk. Right. But also, like, to think about it, to get people to think about it a bit differently is, I may not get discharged as a man. I may have yeah. the tender or swollen testicle things and that could affect me a bit different. Well, that affect me more similar to how it would affect the woman because that's directly attacking my ability to reproduce. Well, right. it, it's, it's just like um, the case of herpes. You know, I saw this one young lady where, you know, the the male, they'll know even just by putting their hands on their genitals, they'll say, oh, something is something is something is painful. Well, women, do you know that the herpes blisters can actually be inside of the vagina, inside right. the vaginal wall? And so. Because the urethra goes on the outside, she wasn't feeling anything. Right. She wasn't, urine wasn't touching it at all. She was like, la, 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 la. And when I put in the, the speculum, she had her vaginal wall inside was covered. Mm -hmm. The fact is, the fact is, is that we are all different. But, but, but because, but because our chemistry is is built on a different platform it's going to manifest itself differently it's going to manifest itself differently the vagina has a musty odor that is just the normal smell of the vagina it's a musty odor but guess what the male eh, he goes on about his business goes back to what internal that chemistry that chemistry, that is one reason why a lot of women are plagued with yeast infections. They are plagued with bacterial vaginosis. And by the way, a lot of women don't know, do you know the Centers for Disease Control considers bacterial vaginosis a STI, a mm -hmm. sexually transmitted infection. There, right. A lot of young women will come in, I think it, I, I think it's, it's probably that BV, and they have no idea that that is classified as an STI. Yeah, but you can't like when you when you contract BV, that means somebody put something somewhere where it shouldn't have been, and bacteria was directly transferred from one place to you. So you yeah. shouldn't take that lightly. Nope. Also, Miss People, nope. I think. I think you got a challenge because the rapper Fly, who is a health professional, said the vagina's supposed to smell like water. Yeah. Now, what you going to do about that? What the rapper Fly, the rapper Fly said that the vagina is supposed to smell like water. So what you going to say to counter that? Half. Nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but but see, the the reason why I said that like that is because by the time, around the time when that came out, I think we was early in our HIV career. Mm -hmm. And 
at that time it was difficult because we're still building our wrap up, but it was difficult to get people to understand, hey, the vagina, you're supposed to smell like a vagina. It's not supposed to smell like water. And they're like, well, no, Fly said, but like, well, Fly is a rapper. Right. What is the vagina? The vagina is dark and moist. If you were to go into a closet where, let's say, the ceiling came down, and, as, and the and the closet is closed and it's dark, you're gonna walk and you're gonna say, oh, it smells kind of kind of musty in here, right? Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> walk into a walk and walk through a rainforest. It's gonna be a musty smell. It's gonna smell musty. And that that is what that is uh, see, that's another thing. Women, this is the today is the day that we learn more about ourselves, okay? We don't want anybody telling us about ourselves. Oh no, my boyfriend told me that, well, how come you don't know that about yourself? Why are you waiting until he mentioned something to you? Yeah. No, today is the day because, because if you don't know yourself, how are you going to know when something is not right? Which goes back to being HIV and AIDS awareness. How many women I have heard say, oh yeah, my boyfriend told me I need to come and get tested. Or, yeah, I heard it from this other girl that my boyfriend was infected, so I need to go get tested. Your body was giving you signs the whole time. Well, that's why they don't listen to the body. They listen to the street committee. That's exactly that's right. Part of the problem is they listen to that he stay, she stay, because you got to look at the generation we're in now. They're all about, I'm not going to listen to what professionals say. I got more clout in what my friends say or what the street says or what somebody else says. But do they know? Did they even ask? And that goes back to the question of, women and girls is why we bring that on today is because women and girls are really affected by hiv we put a lot of emphasis on males in the msm population but women and girls are an underlining population that are really affected by hiv because the men who are out there having sex with other men the men who are out there having sex with other women and they're getting tested That's most right. men get tested from their girlfriend their girlfriend when it got tested And she's fine, but that's not the only girl you're sleeping with. Then later on the next day, she comes back and you try to put it off on her as she's the one who gave it to you. So it's just women and girls are very. These king, these queens and princesses need to understand that they are a king and a queen. I mean, a a princess and a queen. That's right. You got to understand, take value over their sales. And they're not doing that. They have to. They have to. Okay. Well, that's a very good point, Matias. Could you? Could you, could both of you help us understand? Because you say, because you said the body is already giving signs. So, what are some signs, especially when we're talking about HIV? But you can, you can include STDs. But what are some signs that a woman should be looking for to indicate that hey, something is not right? I may have contracted some type of STD. Other than, other than we know, like a smell, but other than that. Well, you know, uh, of course, there's the the typical. Uh, vaginal discharge. Sometimes a woman will bleed after sexual intercourse. And and what the bleeding is not necessarily representative of HIV, but what it does is that it calls her, it calls for her to go to the to her provider to get it checked out. So mm-hmm. so if you're if you're bleeding um, with sexual intercourse, if 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 some women actually believe it or not, they have the thrush on the tongue, and it's very painful. You know, they may have um, they may have really thick um, uh, mm, what is it um, yeast, a very th- a very thick yeast infection that will what cause them to go to the provider. And, and in turn, hopefully the provider will test them 
for the whole panel of STIs, gonorrhea, chlamydia, um, syphilis, HIV, even, even down to maybe herpes, trichomoniasis. There are so many of them that actually a woman needs to get tested for. And by the way, by the way, if you are sexually active, ladies, if you are sexually active, if you're sexually active at the age of 12, you still need to have a STD panel, period. They can do a pelvic exam. They don't have to do a pap smear. Pap smear is when you're actually taking cells from the cervix. They don't have to do that, but a provider may do a pelvic exam just to look around and make sure everything is okay. If you are having sex, you need to have an STD panel workup. Okay, so I got my man brain on. You were going where I was going to go. <laughs> yeah. What's the difference between the pap smear and the pelvic exam? Like I said, the, the pap smear actually, believe it or not, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology actually stated that a woman does not have a pap smear until the age of 21. What the pap smear does is that the woman has the vagina and then entering into the uterus is what we call the cervix. The cervix looks like a donut, believe it or not. And what it is, is that we go in and we have like um, a, a plastic tool that is called a speculum, I mean, a uh, spatula, and we take cells from the cervix and we put it in solution and we send it off. And it lets us know whether or not those cells are okay, whether or not they're precancerous. That is what a pap smear did. A pap smear is a cervical cancer screening. That's what. A pelvic exam is same thing. The speculum is put in, but we're looking around inside. We're making sure that the that the tissue, the vaginal tissue looks good. We're making sure that everything looks okay with the cervix. We're not taking cells, but but if they're is if there is discharge that may look out of uh, you know either watery or greenish or yellow we may take a sample of that look under the microscope to see if we see anything so that's the difference one collects cells for a cervical cancer screening the other just examines the vaginal vault as well as the presence of the cervix so when i um now that you explain that part, when the females go to the doctor, uh -huh. they just initially, you know, saying they get a pack or a, pel a pap or a pelvic exam, are right. they automatically going to do the STD test? Because most yeah. girls and women, when they go get the, oh, I'm going to get a pap smear, or I'm going to the clinic to get, um, <coughs> excuse me, a pelvic exam, they automatically think they're getting an STD panel. But right. you know, from I know a neighborhood, if you come in there, you, you, we're, we're testing all of that. That's just part okay. of our policies and procedures and protocols. But, but a lot of places you have to request it. So they have to request it. So ladies, make sure that you ask those questions. If you know you're going in there for an STD, ask. Be vocal. Don't be scared. The only thing they can tell you is no. And if they That's don't, right. if they don't do or ask for the test, like if if you get to a doctor's office, you say I want to do an STD panel, and they don't want to do it for you, find you a new provider. That's correct. That's and, and you know what? Here is talking so you can say, That's what's right. your opinion? I feel like I have an STD. I want to know. And there's nothing wrong with that. So you have to vocalize yourself. And they don't want to do it. Find yourself another That's provider. Right. And you know what, Mateus? On you know what? You made a very good point that made me think. Guess what? Nowadays, the 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 young ladies are into, believe it or not, the anal sex. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Guess what? You need we, an we also check the rectum. We also do that in addition to the pelvic. We can actually look at the what we call the perineum, the anus, and even do what we call a bimanual. We go in, we check, we feel around, and we can actually look at the feel around for in the rectum as well. So, so 
it's a very detailed exam. And I think that's something that women should know, but not only that, these young ladies that are out there as well. Well, I think I'm glad you all said that because it kind of, it helps with the conversation because we know anal sex is the riskiest form of sex that you can have as far as transmission of HIV. Mm -hmm. And one of one of my concerns, it's been it's been a concern of mine for probably like the last five years. Mm -hmm. We we all noticed a rise in anal sex, especially in in like black women. Oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. But but we also know that the education on safe anal sex is either limited less than one percent or none exists. That's exactly and so I do want to get women to understand that we're not saying that you should if you should. But what we are saying is if you're gonna do something, you need to do your research. You probably need to have a conversation with your provider. You need to ask what are some safe practices that I can have as far as having anal sex versus unsafe practices. What are what are some best practices to do? Because like um I'm looking at this this is these are uh, the estimated number of new HIV infections for women from 2014 to 2018. This is from mm -hmm. the so 2014 is 6,700. 2015, 2016, 6,800. Mm. 17, 2018, 6,700. So wow. there's a, the numbers are steady, but the numbers are still the same pretty much every year. And mm -hmm. so they kind of rounded it up to got about around 7,000 new cases of, of HIV infection um, from women every year in the United States. And so we know we have a consistency in it, but we all know that we have a new generation coming up. But that's, but so, that's the thing, though, Joe. If, if we're out there educating, mm -hmm. why are the numbers consistent? Well, why aren't they going why aren't they going down if 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 every remember now they always say every generation is supposed to be smarter than the one before them right, right. But, but the numbers are consistent well, which means well, something's not getting through well put it like this in order for in order for the generation below me in the field in order for that generation to be smarter that means our generation have to teach them and make them smart. Right, right, right. And, and so right. our right. parents are still not talking to us about sex. They're still sending us off to college and not having one conversation about sex. So, and I hear what they're saying. It's, a, it's supposed to be. Yeah, but it's not going to happen if the information is given. That's right. This is like, Miss Deepa, when we do, when we were out there pre COVID, um, we ask that question, how many of y'all parents talk to y'all about sex? What do y'all know? They don't know anything. A lot of these people only learn the stuff from the TV and the music videos. And that's what they see. They learn it from the Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Oh. And, and that's what they, they, they find themselves doing. And so it's like, what do you do from there? Because they don't believe us sometimes. But when something happens, they come to us and that's when we get a chance to educate. And I really do... And it's sad to say, but I think there could be a rise on some STDs and things like that this year due to COVID because a lot of people, the education is lacking because we used to be out there doing educational classes, doing those type of things, but now we can't do those type of things because COVID. So we're in, the, we're in that predicament now where it is. And then they don't listen. You know, most of those people don't listen. They don't do, they, they don't, they listen to, they hear you, you talk about it, it go in one year and out the other, mm -hmm. but they really don't see it until it happens to a friend or themselves or somebody else. So that's another thing, like, I know it's about women and girls and HIV AIDS awareness, but one thing but, that we really do want to push, even in this, um, spec, especially on this day, is PrEP, PrEP and PEP, because yeah. a lot of women are not on PrEP. They aren't. They aren't. It's free exposure prophylaxis, which is the HIV medication that we can put you on that can prevent you from having, I mean, contracting HIV. That's this right. is the method that we do as a preventative method for people to 
get who have high risk sexual behaviors, who have the multiple sex partners, who do the other things like that, who are out there having multiple sex partners, or you don't even have to have the multiple sex partners. You could know because a lot of girls, you stuck on this man because he fits the image that you're looking for. He fits the person that he you think he should be, but you know he's out there cheating. You know he's out there doing other things. So you need to be able to protect yourself because you're still not wearing those condoms because those aren't the conversations that you're having. So we try to put you on PrEP, which is pre-exposure prophylaxis. But a lot of girls don't know that we could also put you on PEP, which is post-exposure prophylaxis. So that means you were exposed. That means you went out there, you had sex with somebody, the condom broke, and then he told you, oh, by the way, I'm HIV positive. Or, oh, the condom broke and, I'm, um, and I started bleeding out of my vagina. Oh, okay, so now you can have a possible exposure. So right. those are things where you need to get to your healthcare professional ASAP. And when I mean ASAP, yeah. I mean immediately. That next morning when you wake up, if it's in the middle of the night, you need to wake up and say, hey, first thing in the morning, I got to be at somebody's doctor's office saying help. But do you know, do you know, since neighborhood um, has been, since we've been prescribing mm -hmm. uh, PrEP and PEP, I think I can count, I've had more women refuse me, refuse their, their positive partner is sitting right there on the exam table. And they look at me, they're just as nice, and they go, they listen to my dog and pony show, and they sit there and they go, that's nice, but that's not for me. And my mouth is open, the partner's mouth but, is open. Now but you know why, though, open. right? You know why they're saying that, though, right? No. Yeah. It's just, tell them, sis. Because it's more looked at as it it's for gay men, or it's for the males to be oh. on that. All the commercials portray mostly to the LGBT and, the and it, they, they feel it's not for them. And that's where we have to break that stigma down. Yes, it came out and yes, it is part of the LGBTQ population, but it's for everybody. And that's the misconception. That's just like when you see oh. ads on there for other HIV medicine, it doesn't mean or for any medication. So if I see a blood pressure medication, it doesn't mean that it's only women in the ad, it's just for women. So right. people have to get past that persona to do that. But we want you to understand that this medication can be free for you. It can be free, we can find copay resources. We want you to understand that it is effective for men and women, not just- So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. For everybody, what Miss People? You mean to tell me, I'm sorry, I did not, I did not know that. Because I'm sitting up here the commercial, preaching. Uh, they they all geared to pretty much trans or or LGBT. Yes, yes. But, but it's stigma. But but think about it. But think they're trying to it. change that too, though, because if you look at the newer commercials, it has everybody in it. Yeah, it, it does. Right. It does. Right. So but, they're trying to break that stigma, but it's hard. But for the person Miss Steeple is talking about, it's also the stigma of I'm taking an HIV medicine. Yeah. Why am I taking the HIV medicine? I right. don't have HIV. Right. Even though I may be sleeping with somebody who has HIV. So let me fast real quick. This is most new HIV diagnoses among women were attributed to heterosexual contact. So heterosexual contact was it was 85 percent, 6,092 cases. Injection drug use, 15 percent. One point uh, on one thousand fifty eight, and then other was like the less than one percent. Say new HIV diagnosis among women by age in the U.S. independent area. So thirteen to twenty four, it was nine hundred and eighty one. This is twenty eighteen. The more recent we have, so thirteen to twenty four, nine hundred and eighty one cases between mm. thirteen twenty five to thirty four, one thousand nine hundred twenty three. 35 to 44, 1,729 cases. 45 to 54, 1,417 cases. 55 and older, 1,140 cases. And see, people don't understand that right now, STDs and HIV are rising in older adults. 
we are seeing more older adults in the clinic that come up with these STDs, not just because they cougars or they sugar daddies or they did. Older people still have sex as well. They still have those same urges. That's you know, right. most people be like, oh, I don't want, that's my mom, that's my dad. No, I don't want to think about that. They still do that. They still have the they same desires and urges that you have. So, and they're out there doing that, but they are from an era where they didn't use condoms like that. So they still feel like they're in that era and it, it's not. And so we're getting a lot of people who are there. And so it just becomes an education for everybody, not just, you know, women and girls. But on this day, we really focus on you guys because y'all are the heart of the population because women are very powerful and respectful human beings because of the simple fact of the matter is you help recreate life. You help do things that we need to survive. And women are powerful. They haven't been seen as that but, uplifting things in so long but, that it's time for a change. But, so it's but, but Tess, society, society right. went through a point in time Mm -hmm. where they, it did not feel that way about women. It did. Let's, but let's, go, back, let's go back to the early 90s and, okay. and the beginning of gangster rap. Okay. You know, you know I that's why I look, I look at certain rappers now and they try to rebrand themselves and I go, I'm old enough that I remember when you used to call us hoes mm. and other words. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But see, but see, that's the thing, though. I look back at some of the women, some of the older women that come into the clinic and they were in their late 20s, early 30s. They were listening to that gangster rap. Yeah. And who damn have, it. Who have low self-esteem mm -hmm. that they can, they don't feel to tell the gentleman, hey, you know, put on a condom, wrap it up. Look, or, people not putting on masks in the COVID. You got neither men nor women want to put on masks in the middle of a COVID pandemic. Why? Because everybody feels like they have the correct answer. And everybody, you can't tell me what to do for my body because I know me and I'm a professional on this. And it's like, we, we, we see that behavior. We can see it now through the COVID, through the, the deny or the refusal to wear a mask, especially if we just concentrate on our right. community. Right. You can see the refusal to wear a mask. I don't want to wear this mask. Uh, I don't want to wear this mask because, just because. But you or know what, Joe? With vaccine. But Joe, you know what we're seeing though? We're seeing a lot more PEP come in this clinic, a lot more PrEP. We're seeing a lot more STDs. Yeah. I mean, that, and the CDC and them predicted that this would happen. Yes. But I'm just trying to figure out, we're yes. in a global pandemic. Would you consider it global? Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. I just want to make sure I use the right word. Yes. And yeah. with the global pandemic, you're having unprotected sex. You're less than six feet apart. You're kissing, you're panting, you're breathing, you're doing all these things. You're not worried about COVID. Neither are you worried about HIV until... <laughs> After you had sex, and like, oh my God, it just clicked. I just had sex with somebody. I don't know. I'm totally had sex with a random person. That's right. Not That's even right. I could be pregnant. But that does bring up another thing. That's right. That I just want to make sure we clarify with a lot of people because, you know, PEP and PrEP are very new to the market, you would say. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that if you're pregnant, things can happen as well. Yep. And that you do yes. have the option of taking PrEP. I mean, yes. excuse me, PEP. Yes. PrEP, I don't think you can take PrEP until after the baby, but you can take PEP if you are exposed through a right. sexual encounter or anything if you are pregnant. You just need right. to make sure that you talk with your healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. And that you mm -hmm. um, explain what's going on in your body and what you have going on, because it's important for us to know as healthcare professionals. If you come to me as a female and don't tell me that you're pregnant, uh, it could be a real big issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is we just you want to make you. sure we, we, we educate you guys on, make sure you tell your provider what is going on. Tell us right. what type of sexual activity you're having, because every provider does not do 
how we do at Neighborhood. If you tell us you're coming in here for a PEP, I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there in the atmosphere in the world and let you know. You're getting an STD panel. Yes, you are. And we're swabbing your throat, your <laughs> penis, or vagina, and your rectum, whether you play back there or not. We are going to find this out. And a lot of times when we do this, the people who say they don't play back there, they have stuff back. They play. They And they and play. So, they play big time. It's going to come out in the end. You know, as the parents used to say, what's done in the dark will come it to light at some light. point. It's going to come out. The numbers don't lie. So we now, really Joe, need to understand. Now, you know what you said? You mentioned something about a pregnant woman. Joe had a situation this weekend. We did. <laughs> we did. Look, it what all in all, because we gotta start to wrap this up, but all in all, this this whole the focus of this podcast and, and the the reason why the conversation is where it is, because we want to make sure that the women in our community, the women that we're able to reach on a regular basis, have the actual information that they need to keep themselves safe and are using the, the information, but also we want to encourage communities and support groups to be around these women that are telling the truth, not just echo chambers, but are being honest and helping people grow. That's because right. we can give you all the information. We can, I can give somebody all the tools they need to build the building. But if you don't have the self-confidence that you can build that building, you're not going to use it. So same thing with this. I give you all the information. I can give you everything you need to keep yourself safe. But if your self-confidence is there, you won't use it the way it's supposed to be used. And like Matthias already said, we know how great women are. We know how special women are. But we know how important women are. So the thing is, is we want to, first of all, show, so as men, show our support and our solidarity with women. Because we, we, we with you. We've been rocking with you. And we're going to continue to rock with you. But also, as healthcare professionals, we got some information that can help you all. So, I, I and I understand on women's issues, a lot of men's voices are not welcome. But at the same time, we're not man. I know in our place, we're not mansplaining. We're giving you information via a professional. That's so, right. I kind of want to put that bow on that. But, Miss Staple, you, as always, you come through top man. Like that. But we you gotta, know, I love educating. You know why? Because the steeple, Joe, Mateus, we don't go home with y'all phone. Mm -hmm. We don't. We, so we have to impart information to you guys. Right. You know, right. we don't follow right. y'all home. So, Miss Steeple, so. before, because we're going to wrap it up, because we, we're going to have to wrap it up. But for me, what take point, what takeaway points would you want women and girls to know about HIV that could kind of help them? What tidbits would you want to give out? Like for me, I just think that it's important that girls research and understand what's going on and know about safe sex practices. Mm -hmm. Please reach out to Neighborhood Medical Center if you do have any questions about safe sex, the Leon County Health Department or Gaston County Health Department or the whatever health department is in your area. Right. Any FQAC, which is a fairly qualified healthcare center, ask your doctor, ask the doctor, make them feel uncomfortable. A lot of doctors don't like to talk about stuff like this, but make them feel uncomfortable. And that's, talk right. that's what they get paid for. This that's is right. what they went to school to do. We really want you to go out and ask them and do things. But I really want women and girls to understand that you are a prize. You are the that's person correct. to be that person, that you are beautiful, you are strong, you are what the community needs today. So we want you to be empowerful and uplift yourself and lift up each other. But we also want you to be safe when you do it. So please, please get condoms. They're free at the local health departments and community centers. We really want you to be educated to really take the time and get to know your partners before you're having sex. Make yourself and your worth really be your worth. Because once you give up that innocence, if you haven't given it up yet, you can't get it back. Right. So and really you want have you free will. Do you know what there I mean like that? Free will. You have the option to say, no, I'm not going to have sex with you unless you put that condom on or, okay, I'll go with it. It is free will. That's the one thing God has given us. Free will. Make sure, make sure that you use that precious gift to your advantage. 
that's that's, that's the right. one thing that I'll say. Free will. Right. There it is. Hey, and remember, today is National Women and Girls, International Women and Girls, HIV, International. HIV So um, let's make sure that we continue to uplift and empower our women. And remember that this is Mind, Your Body, and Soul, an educational podcast that focuses on all things health-related to help our listeners learn more about various health topics and information they may not have access to. That's we right. seek to inform, empower, uplift, and mobilize our listeners become the healthiest versions of themselves. Every Wednesday, check us out, nmcpodcast.com, as well as Anchor, anchor.fm. Go check us out on there. Breaker, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and check out our Neighborhood Medical Center YouTube channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Like and comment and share this video so more people can see it because we want to make sure that our women know that we got y'all back. We got y'all back. <laughs> So with that being said, I am Joseph Ward. He is, he is sweet. He is the incredible Mr. Landon Seaford. We out of here. We'll see y'all later.